Today I'm going to show you 10 tree climbing hacks that will make your tree climbing a bit easier. All right, let's get to it. A real good way to flake your line back, your throw line back into your throw bag is to use your chest clip or a carabiner on your waist to help flake it back into your throw bag. This could also work for your throw line. If your throw line's out on the ground, you could do it in two different ways. Probably not your chesty unless you have a bigger clip, but definitely the carabiner would work. So the way you can do it is you grab your shot bag line and you throw it on your clip of your chesty and now it helps you flake into your bag. And that's simple as that. As you're flaking, it holds it right in place. And if you don't have a chesty and you want to use your carabiner, you could have it on your waist into a belt loop and you can just flake it into your bag. And this will also work with your climbing lines too. If you have a lot of rope on the ground, you get it back to you and there you go. Simple as that. A hack you can use when you're using an SRS line, a lot of times when you're starting your climb from the ground up, having a little bit of weight on your line helps out. So um, grabbing a bottle and using a clove hitch and setting up a, a bottle on your clove at the base of your line will help you to weight your line. And then once you get to the top, now you could use your um, bottle, you know, take it up to yourself and stow it in one of your pouches and use it. So I'll connect, throw your ascender into the line, and now proceed to climb. Once you get to the top, you just bring your bottle up to you and disconnect and then you could stow it away in your pouch. If you have an SRS line and say you, you forgot your chesty or you didn't have one, you could also use your lanyard to tend your SRS line. All you got to do is grab your lanyard, undo it, bring it up <coughs> over your shoulder, connect it to your line or your, your, your climbing system. Don't forget to connect your climbing system to you. So now all I gotta do is get some of the slack out of it. Foot ascender on. And ascend the tree. Once you get to your destination, you just unclip. And go ahead and set your lanyard to your D and there you go if you're advancing up and you're in the tree we'll say that I'm higher up in the tree and I've come to a, a point where I need to advance I've thrown my line up and I got it to the crotch that I want to grow, go to um, but the rope is kind of far away I, I won't be able to reach it so what I can do is get a, a bite of my climbing line and then grab it with that so what I'll have to do is I'll have to get some slack pull out some slack into my line and then I'll grab a bite I'll grab a bite of rope and I'll get prepared and then I'll throw it to that rope and I'll capture that line there you go once I have it I'll undo my throw knot grab my carabiner Connect it to my saddle. I'll put my termination hitch in. I have that double fisherman bend. Get it ready. Boom. Now I tighten my line. And then I'm ready to advance to the location that I was going to. When it comes to a larger tree, getting your lanyard around the tree can kind of be tough. Well, here's another way you can do it. You get your lanyard, throw it behind your neck, and then you'll just kind of lean toward the tree and let it go in reverse. And it swings your clip or carabiner all the way to the other side. And there you are, just connected to your saddle and you got it around that big trunk. When you're using a throw bag, sometimes it can be the toughest thing in the world to do. A lot of times people will use 
one uh, throw line and then one shot bag. Well, if you use two shot bags on one line, sometimes it can help you get to your line, your crotch that you want to isolate a little bit easier. So what we've done here is I've thrown from this side and I've thrown completely over this tree. And we're using a smaller tree just so we can see the line. Where my plan is to where there's that double, that, that V crotch, where the line's going completely through and all the way to the other side of the tree, what we're gonna do is isolate the line. So um, we just did a, a, you know, throw over everything. So now what I'll do is I'm gonna pull this line and I'll see if I can bring that ball to that crotch. So I'll go to this side first and I'll slowly bring it through. We might have a bit of line because it's a real short tree. And here we go. Okay. So it's up off the ground and I have to go slow to pull it through all the other branches. Okay. Here we go. Nice. Now what you want to do is try to be steady and not yank it because sometimes when you yank it, the shot back can flip around a branch and get stuck. So hopefully we don't do any of that. All right. Pull, pull, pull. We're kind of stuck already. There it goes. Ah, all right. I'm on a little branch, a little light pressure so it doesn't flip out of the crotch that we're hoping for. Let's pull it. There it goes. All right. All right, a little bit of pressure there. Okay, so now what I'll do is I'll just let it come down right there. And now that I've got that side, okay, now what I'll do is I'm gonna go to the other line where this bag is and since I already have a line connected to that side, I'll just run it through. There we go. There we go. Let it detach. And I'll do the same thing. I'll take my time when I get to the other branches. I don't want to whip and, and get stuck. So slow down right there. Okay, up and through. All right, all right, all right, there we go. Oh yeah, so maybe I think what I'll do is I'll let this one go the other side. I'll drop this and I'll, I'll isolate it over this one limb. So this line right here, since I have that one limb in the way, I'll go to the other line and I'll bring it up through. And it'll give me a, a better climb. So here we go, bringing it up through. we are go back up inside now I'm almost at that one limb that's in the way and after I pass it boom bring it right back down now there I have an isolated line now I would just attach my rope and throw it up to that tie-in point here's a hack called the stick trick it's you can use any stick you want you can even use tools that are on your truck what it is is when you're felling a tree and it's a large tree to estimate where the tree is going to fall so you won't hit things. So when you do this, the way you'll do it is you grab a stick and now everybody's a little different. Some people have, are taller and with longer arms. It works per your body um, specifications. So what you do is you grab your stick and you'll tilt it. You hold your arm straight up and bring the stick to your eye. Once you get that, you don't want to bend your head back. You don't want to bend it forward. You want to have it straight. Once you get it to your eye, now what you're going to do is tilt your stick up. Now the next thing you'll do is when you have a tree, you're going to look at the base of the tree and then you look at the top of the tree. So we have this little oak here behind us. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look and as I do it, I'm going to look down my shoulder straight to the bottom of the tree and to the top of the oak. So right now, I need to walk a little bit forward because it's not in line. So I want to see the tip of the tree to there and the base of the tree to here. So I'll take a couple steps forward. Okay, so about right here, I would line from here to the base and then I look to the top and I'll see the center of the tree. And right around here is where that tree would fall. So once I figured out this, now what I'll do is I'll get the stick and where my hand was, I'll put it here. 
in the ground. Our making mark put something there. And when we fall this tree, it would land within that space. Now, even if it's a large tree, it would do the same thing. We made a lanyard that had a chisel on it. A chisel is a little tool that's meant to tend your line. It's kind of shaped like a boat clip. So what we did is used a boat clip and connected it to our lanyard and it actually serves the same purpose. So when you do it, it just tends your line. What's really cool is it doesn't have to be rated because your, your life support is here. Um, so that, yeah, that's what we did with a lanyard, but you can also, if you want to, you can get this, take your boat clip off, and you can also use it to tend your climbing system. I'll show you that right now. Get this off. All right, I'll grab this boat clip and set this here. On the other side of the tree here, I have already in place a climbing system for an MRS system. So if you were climbing MRS and for some odd reason you misplaced your lanyard or you, I mean your pulley, you didn't have it, you could use this in place of that just like you would on the lanyard. So to do that, you just clip this in, actually you throw your eye, throw the ring here, throw this on here. And then what you do is clip this boat clip onto your climbing system, connect it to your saddle. And so the, the beauty of this, this is not life support, but the carabiner and your pressic cord are. So you do it just like um, you had a pulley. You just need a boat clip that's big enough or wide enough to, to put there. So all you do is you're gonna tend your line There you go. Here's another hack that you can do if you have some nice climbing line. It's maybe you don't use it all the time or maybe you do have a brand new rope and you wanna use a split tail. What you can do is cut a section of your rope off, you know, I'd say about a five foot section of rope. You can cut it off and then you can whip it. You know, you can either use tape or a whip and what you can do is tie a termination not so right here i'll tie a double fisherman's bend as my termination so once i get my termination on here you want to have at least three inches of tail on your line all right that's about three inches all right now i have created a split tail so what you can do with that is take it to your mrs climbing system connect your um Termination on. Oops, I'll switch carabiner to the front. Throw your split tail in the front and your termination here. And now with your split tail that you've created with your rope, you place it here and tie, say like a Blake's, and you're ready to go. And you don't have to buy anything. You could just use from rope that you have. As long as it's good rope and, and good condition because this is your lifeline. You definitely you don't want to have something that's um, not in good condition. There you go. Get it set up. A little bit of weight on it. And then a stopper knot. There you have it. Another real cool hack is when it comes to your ropes, a lot of people will cut their ends and they'll be like a big puff ball. Well, that's really never good on your ropes. It's always good to have them either taped or whipped. So in whipping, you can just buy some contractor string from say like Home Depot, and you don't have to do the complete um, way where you use a needle to go through it, but you can do whipping in this way where it stays on your rope, you melt the ends a bit, and you can have it for a long time and it'll keep your rope in real good condition. Another thing you can do with the whipping is you can use different colors of whipping to identify different types of rope use. So say if you wanted to do um, rigging ropes, you can do them in one color. And if you have all your climbing ropes, you can do them in another color. That's, that's a good way, or even like a tagline, you can also use a different color for that. That's a real good option and a, a good cheap way to keep your ropes in good condition.